Now we can move on and talk about lower tailed testing for a mean. Uh, and the concepts here are pretty much exactly the same as for upper tail testing. Uh, it's just that uh, we need to well, switch a few things around from the upper tail to the, to the lower tail. So the starting position is the same. We have a simple random sample uh, drawn from a population with a mean of mu that we want to know about. And we have a sample mean that's estimating uh, that population mean. Um, so same kind of thing as before. Um, and then the hypotheses are, well, slightly different. The null hypothesis is the same, okay? So the null hypothesis is always going to be that the mean is equal to some given value, but the alternative hypothesis is now lower tailed in the sense that we're interested in deviations of the population mean that are below the hypothesized value, okay? Hence lower tailed. So that's the difference right there. And again, you'll see that information to use the lower tail test comes from the wording of the, of the question that you're trying to answer. Now, the test statistic is the same. There's no change here. Okay, so the test statistic remains as being the X bar, the sample mean, minus the hypothesized value for the mean, whatever that is, divided by this standard error. And the distributional result is the same. So if the null hypothesis is true, if m truly is the correct value for mu, then this t statistic is t distributed. But if the null hypothesis is not true, and m is not, the, not equal to mu, then we don't have a t distribution. So all the intuition is the same, right? We, we want to check to see if the t statistic that we calculate appears likely to have been drawn from the t distribution that, that holds under the null hypothesis. The only difference now is that we're particularly interested in seeing, uh, in looking for values for the t statistic that are in the lower tail of the t, of the t distribution. Okay, those are the ones that will lead us to reject the null if the t statistic is far enough into the lower tail of the distribution. Um, otherwise, we will not reject the null. So, you know, even if the t-statistic is up in the upper tail of the distribution, we're not interested in that when we're doing a lower tail test. Okay, so we're only interested in these values for t which are far enough into the lower tail of the distribution. All right, the decision rules for a lower tail test are just kind of like mirror images of the decision rules for the upper tail test. So the distance of the t statistic into the lower tail and measured by this probability here. We've just flipped around this inequality. This was an up, a greater than for an upper tail test. Now it's the probability that the t distribution is less than the t statistic that we observe. So we're looking in the, in the lower tail with this less than sign here. And if we calculate that thing with, from the calculated statistic, that's the p-value for the lower tail test. So notice the p-value for a lower tail test is calculated with a different probability. When it was an upper tail test, we had a greater than there. Now that it's a lower tail test, we have a less than. So the p-value calculation is different. We're looking at the, the other end of the, of the distribution. This can be calculated directly in Excel, just using the t-distribution command. You put in whatever the t-statistic that you calculated is, you put in your degrees of freedom, you put in true, and that will return to you the p-value that's been talked about here. The decision rule, then, is the same as with an upper tail test. We will reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than alpha, so less than 0 0.05, for example. We can also do or use a, a decision rule based on a critical value, and the critical value here is essentially the same kind of thing as what we had for the upper tail test, except now because we're looking in the lower tail of the distribution, basically two things change. We have a less than here for looking in the lower tail, and because the values for the T distribution down there are negative, we have a, a negative sign on our critical value. So this T alpha n minus 1, this is the same critical value. Notice that this um, probability statement here is the same, exactly the same one as we had for the upper tail test. So calculating that number there is the same, whether you're looking upper or lower tail. But then when you want to use it in the decision rule, you just need to remember to put a minus sign in front of it for, for the lower tail test. Uh, two ways of getting it in Excel, actually. You can 
um, get the this um, critical value directly from this command here, which is what we saw uh, before in the upper tiled case, or you can get it um, directly with the minus sign included just by using the inverse of the, uh, the T distribution and put the alpha in here. So if you want to do the test at the 5% level, then this would be 0 0.05 here, whereas that would be 0.95. Either way, you'll end up with the same hypothesis test. Um, this one just comes with the minus sign included and this one does not. It doesn't matter. You can check that once you've got some numbers. Or we can look it up from a table. So we'll get some numbers. I'll show you the table in a minute. Um, to get some numbers though, let's grab another example from the textbook. And here we have uh, an attempt to reduce the number of person hours lost as a result of industrial accidents. A large production plant installed some new safety equipment. Uh, in a test of the effectiveness of the equipment, a random sample of 50 departments was chosen, so there's some information. We've already had some information, by the way, um, that we'll come back to. Um, they're trying to reduce the number of hours lost to accidents. Okay, so that's an important word right there. After you read these things a few times, you quickly start to zoom in on where the important information is. It's important practice. Uh, the number of person hours lost in the month prior to and the month after the, safe, the installation of the safety equipment was recorded and the percentage change was calculated. So it's where they're interested in testing to see if the uh, new equipment is effective, which is to say looking to see whether the number of hours lost went down, was reduced. Okay, so if the safety equipment was useless, if it did nothing, then we would see no change in hours lost. Okay? So no change would be a percentage change that would be zero. Okay? So I'm going to read into this what, what's trying to be tested. If we're testing for effectiveness, we're testing that the null hypothesis is going to be that there is no change. And then the alternative is that we have a reduction. All right, so let's go through this. Uh, the mu that we're interested in uh, trying to estimate here is the average change lost across all the departments. Okay, so they've got 50 departments in the sample. Don't know how many uh, departments are in total in the population. But anyway, so mu is the, uh, the average change in hours lost across all of the departments. And as, as a result of the, the safety equipment. Uh, so if mu is equal to zero, that would imply that the safety equipment were, was ineffective. Okay, there would be no change in hours lost. Whereas if mu were negative, that would imply that the safety equipment was effective because on average the number of person hours lost went down. Okay, so in this case, negative outcomes are good outcomes because the outcomes are person hours lost. The sample size is 50. That was um, included in here as well. Okay, so that, sh that shows you how to extract the relevant pieces of uh, information from the question. And it also says at the end uh, it's actually specifying a different significance level. So the significance level here is 10%, so that would be setting alpha is equal to 0.1. Okay, we're going to ignore this information about the sigma is 0.5 because we will estimate that. I mean, in practice, you don't know what the sigma is, you have to estimate it, and that's what we'll do. Uh, okay, so here's how the calculation looks. This is what the, the spreadsheet looks like, and I can show you that spreadsheet. Here it is. So the spreadsheet from the question looks something like this. You can, you can download and, and do these calculations. Uh, so, for instance, if you wanted to work out what the average is, then we'll just go the usual thing. The average of all of those values is equal to minus 1.2, as shown there. Uh, we can work out the standard deviation at STDEVS, and the standard deviation of all of those numbers is equal to 5.063. As shown there. Okay, so that's our mean, this is our standard deviation. The n is 50, and then that allows us to calculate our um, t statistic. So in this case, because the null value is zero, so m is equal to zero in this case on the top line of the t statistic, we have x bar minus zero. So the null hypothesis is no change, no effectiveness. Okay. 
Okay. So in this case, our t statistic will just be the mean divided by the standard deviation and then divided again by the square root of the sample size, which is 50. Like that. And we get the t statistic there, which is reported up here. Okay, so that gets you those calculations nice and easily. All right, here is how the decision rule goes using the p-value. So you then work out, using the t-distribution command, uh, the t-statistic that's there and then the degrees of freedom. So let's actually do that. Why don't we do that? It's pretty easy. So we'll go, um, in this cell, we'll go equals the t-distribution. Uh, and we'll just point to the statistic that's sitting right there, um, so in that cell. The degrees of freedom is 49, and we do want a cumulative, so we go true. Okay. And there is our p-value, 0 0.050, just 1. So that's that number that's being reported right there. Okay, so that's, that's where that p-value has come from. And coming back to here, what that's telling you about this um, distribution here is, so this is the, the t-distribution. The T statistic is this minus 1.6, so that's falling out here. It's, in, it's towards the lower tail of the distribution. And the area that's below that value, so we're looking at a lower tail test now, because our alternative, just to emphasize that, our alternative is a less than. Okay, so we're interested in the lower tail here. And the p-value is this 0 0.0501. To make the decision then, remember that the significance level in this case was 10%. So the value of alpha is 0.1. So the decision rule is we will reject the null if the p-value is less than alpha, which in this case it is. Okay, The p-value is 0 0.05, which is less than 0.1. Therefore, we reject the null and we can come to the conclusion that there is evidence at this level of significance that the safety equipment is effective in reducing the hours lost to accidents. Okay, so that's the that's the, um, the p-value approach to this. Now we can also check out how the critical value approach would work at the 10% level of significance. So what I'm showing you here is how to calculate the critical value um, kind of directly. So the point one, so this command here is reproducing what is here, this one, okay? So we're working out the inverse of the t-distribution at point one in this case, alpha is equal to point one, and then putting in the degrees of freedom. So we're using the second one. So that's that calculation. Um, see that fairly easily if we go equals t dot inverse and then point 0 0.1 and the degrees of freedom is 49 um, that will give us that critical value there um, so I notice in my um, slide here we have a true that actually doesn't belong there so let's let's pretend that that's not there that doesn't belong in an inverse uh, inverse command as you saw when I typed it in just a minute ago. So uh, this number, this minus 2.991 uh, number, this critical value that we've calculated here, that's this number, okay? And the area below that number, minus 1.299, is 0.1, okay? The specified level of significance. Um, and so the critical value is, is that number. And what we're saying is we will reject the null hypothesis for any um, value of the test statistic which falls below that critical value. So because this is a lower tail test, we reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is less than the critical value. And there it is there, that red dot is the test statistic that we've calculated. So our t statistic is minus 1.67, our critical value is minus 1.2, the T statistic is less than the critical value, it falls into the rejection region, and therefore we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so because the T statistic is less than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. So again, we're coming to the same conclusion as we know that we must um, with these different 
decision rules, you must end up in the same place. If you want to look up, or if you need to look up, a um, critical value for a lower tail test, then you can find it from the same table of critical values that we used for the upper tailed test. Uh, the only difference is for the lower tail test, you just need to use the negative of the upper tailed one. Uh, so in this example that we've just been looking at, we have um, uh, a significance level of point 0.1, okay, so we go to the point 0.1 column, and the degrees of freedom here is 49, so we go to 50, which is the closest one. So the critical value that, we're, that this table would give us for an upper tail test would be 1.299, and we just need to put a minus sign in front of that to turn it into a, a lower tail um, critical value. And you can see that that corresponds to this critical value that we calculated in Excel as well. Um, so that will do. Uh, that will do just as just as well. Um, and that's you need to know how to how to do that to implement one of these tests in the exam as well.